Hello, everybody. Um, it is day 18, and that's a good day for me because day 18 means a rest day. We were in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, spent time just chilling out, um, eating some good barbecue, um, and that's a good thing because it is hot, hot, hot. It is uh, 94 degrees, I believe, right now outside, um, and uh, I'm glad I'm not biking today. Not that, not that it's not going to be uh, super hot tomorrow, but anyway. Um, as you know, in St. Louis, uh, for those of you who've been watching the vlog, uh, I spent some time being a little bit more serious in terms of what I'm doing, why I'm doing. Um, I think uh, in St. Louis, I talked about three basic things. Let's see if I can remember them. Uh, I talked about identity. I talked about purpose. And I talked about the renewal leave and what that means in the context of disconnecting in order to re-embrace identity and purpose. And so you can go back and watch that vlog. I'm not going to rehash any of that uh, in detail. But what I did want to talk about, though, is what, what I do after renewal and what my intentions are after renewal leave. Because um, as a United Methodist pastor, uh, we're allowed to take a renewal leaves every five, uh, four to six years. Well, that's that's great, but it's not like we get to take a renewal leave every time we need to re-embrace identity and purpose. So I want to talk a little bit about how, what I've learned over the years that helps me stay focused uh, in the midst of the day-to-day -day grind of being a pastor. And so I'm going to speak a lot to those of you who uh, struggle with pastoring or, or find themselves in the midst of uh, professional ministries of some sort or other. Um, and maybe some of you who aren't in that can still relate, particularly if you're in the people business, uh, of how to go about staying focused. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to speak mainly to identity and purpose. Um, so, so there's a couple things, particularly with identity, um, that I try to do during the day-to-day -day grind. And it took me a long time to learn this. But it has to do with healthy boundaries. Uh, in the beginning of my ministry, when I got confused between identity and purpose, uh, that is when I was confused and thought that what I do is who I am, um, my boundaries were not as healthy. Um, there was a lot of crossing over between Joe and Pastor Joe. And as a result, um, you know, I took, I took my job much more personally than I do now, uh, both in the successes and the failures. What I've learned over the years, and it's a very difficult thing to do, particularly in, in an ordained ministry, uh, because there, there's a lot of blurred lines. Um, you know, as a pastor, you don't clock in, clock out. There's no, there's no set bound boundary in, term, in terms of time of when you work and when you're not working, and every week is different. You know, um, in terms of what the needs are at the church. Um, so over the years, it's taken a lot of time to learn how to create healthy boundaries. And so I just wanted to list some things that I do that help me stay focused on the distinction between who I am and what I do from, from day to day. Um, and, uh, for example, in this day and age, uh, being able to contact one, someone is so easy. You've got text, you've got email, um, and so on and so forth. So for the church to contact me, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, when, when, we got, when we entered the age of the cell phone, um, I had basically, and my wife talks about this a lot, I had the church in my pocket. Anybody from the church could call me at any time, and I could call anybody from the church at any time. Day or night doesn't matter because the cell phone's in my pocket. And so I basically have a phone book in my pocket, um, able to access anyone at any time, and they to access me at, at any time. Well, that can become a very unhealthy thing because as a pastor, then you're constantly on the clock. 24-7, and people can call you at any time. So one of the things I've, I've learned to do is to limit that and to communicate well with the church in terms of, um, you know, when I'm accessible. Uh, I should say when I'm available. There's a difference between being accessible and available. I, I'm always accessible. You can always con contact me, but I'm not always available. And so I went through the process over the last few years of becoming more uh, firm on my days off um, and 
more intentional about when, at least in my head, when I clock out uh, for the day. Uh, one of the first things I did was I got a Google number. Um, I created a, a separate phone number that was specifically used for work, um, as opposed to my personal phone number. Um, there might be still a lot of church people who don't even know that I do that, but I have a personal number that I don't give out. Um, I have a Google number, uh, I call my work number, that I advertise and, and share uh, via all the communications within uh, the church, uh, within the church workings. Um, that allows me to look at my phone and know what the phone call is for. If I know it's coming through my Google number, I know it's church business, and it's my the professional side of my life. If it's my per personal number, then I know that um, it's not. So that's really helped me a lot. Uh, of course, the other thing I did is I have two emails. I have a work email. I have a personal email. Um, I know a lot of pastors out there who don't um, don't make that don't make those distinctions and don't separate the two. And that can work for some people. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it works for you, but for me, it didn't work uh, because because my personal life and my professional life were constantly be, be, uh, crossing over. Uh, and so I never got that mental break uh, for my work day. So that's one of the things I did uh, right away. Um, I also became much more firm on my days off. And this is still difficult for me to do at times. Uh, but you know, I get two days off a week. Most people have two days off a week. Uh, and the United Methodist Church, in particular, in our, in our conference, uh, made this a, a rather significant issue a few years back as far as um, days off for pastors. And what does that mean? And there's a whole long conversation about what it means for pastors to take days off. Um, and so I'm, I'm much more strict with that for myself. Uh, and for me to be much more strict with that, I make sure I have things to do on my day off. Uh, so that I can, and when I say things to do, non-church things to do, non-job related things to do. And, and I make sure to do those things because it takes my mind away from my work. What that does is it keeps me energized for the days that I'm working, uh, for the days that I am working. So it helps me actually keep my energy up. Uh, you know, if you can imagine working seven days a week and you're constantly thinking about work seven days a week, that's going to weigh on you, um, and, then, and that's not healthy. So, um, so separating how communication happens between personal and professional life, making sure that you're firm on your days off, and, and some pastors are not very good. I'm just going to be honest. Some pastors just aren't good at this, um, and I think there's a, there is oftentimes a very unhealthy relationship between pastors and their parishes. When it comes to days off, uh, and, and it's mostly I'm gonna pick on the pastors. It's mostly the pastor's fault because they don't set the boundaries and they don't set the expectations with the church from the get-go. And quite frankly, codependent relationships between a pastor and a congregation isn't rare. Uh, it's not uncommon to find pastors who are codependent with their congregations. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what codependency is, um, I always like to say. Um, What's the phrase? The need to be needed. Uh, there are pastors out there who need to be needed. And so they feed into this codependent relationship uh, where if, if the congregation at some point doesn't need them for any particular thing, they feel unneeded and as a result feel less than valued, not healthy. So communication, taking days off, uh, recognizing that it is a job. It's what you do. It's not who you are. Um, and those boundaries help me stay focused on the distinction between who I am and what I do. And as a result, I feel like I do a much better job when I am working. And when things are going well, um, I don't have the ups and downs. So if things are going bad or things are going well, I don't have nearly the ups and downs emotionally um, as, a, as, a, as a person. Uh, because I have that distinction between my personal life and personal identity and my professional life and my professional identity. Hope that makes sense. Um, if not, you can always ask questions in the comments. Uh, the other thing I do to help me stay focused and stay healthy is finding the right kind of relationships that understand uh, the difference between 
personal and professional. There are a handful of relationships in my ministry, and they're, they're not common, they're, and they're hard to find. But I could go through the 28 years I've been doing this and identify at any one point one or two or three relationships uh, within the church where people recognize that, um, I don't know how to say this, uh, how can I say this, they recognize my humanity first and my role second. Uh, for those of you who are in our ministry, um, oftentimes as pastors we are put up on pedestals. Fairly or unfairly we're put up on pedestals. And there's oftentimes a perception in the pews of the church that you are somehow above everyone else. However you want to look at that. Spiritually, um, emotionally, um, however you want to look at that, we as pastors are put up on pedestals. And so you have to be very careful about the kind of personal relationships you have within the church because the expectations are unrealistic. The human condition is real. I'm just as pastors are just as human as anyone else in the pews. Uh, flaws, temptations, uh, strengths, weaknesses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there are usually a handful. I've had a handful of relationships through my career that understand that, and it's a special kind of friendship that you can create when there's a person who's who understands your role and respects your role, but they're also open-minded minded enough have the kind of conversations with you that can that can see you for who you are and not become overly critical or judgmental um, you know when you find those kinds of relationships embrace those I have two or three at any point in time where I feel like I can call someone up and say hey you want to have lunch and we'll have lunch once a month and they can sit and they can listen to what I have to say all my flaws and strengths and failures and weaknesses and good points and bad points and ambitions and they have my best interest at heart. They have no unfair expectations. Uh, they're not overly critical or judgmental. Um, it's what I would consider or call a true uh, authentic friendship. Uh, when you can have that kind of relationship and it works both ways, you know, me towards them as well. Um, that um, that can be supportive and encouraging while also having an issue of accountability uh, when it's right to do so. Uh, those relationships in my life are crucial in helping me stay focused. Um, it also keeps me off the pedestal. You know, my wife is a great partner, but it's not always fair for her to keep me push keep pushing me off the pedestal when I get all high and mighty. Um, and also not fair to ask her to encourage me every time I feel like um, I'm an abject failure. So having those friendships and um, engaging those friendships on a regular basis. Um, I make it a point to go to lunch with two or three different people um, every month, meet with them, um, even if I don't feel like I need to. It helps keep me grounded. Um, so boundaries, being accessible versus being available taking days off and being firm with those, uh, recognizing um, what the unhealthy relationships are with the church, particularly around codependent issues, and having the right kind of relationships to help to keep you grounded. Um, those are some of the things I do uh, going back to the St. Louis conversation of helping me understand the difference between identity and purpose. Um, and uh, the difference between personal life and professional life. Uh, I don't know if this is helpful for anybody. Um, I'm enjoying doing this vlog. It's quite frankly, it's just fun for my wife and I, Kim and I, to do this and um, to document our trip. Uh, but it's also going to be useful for us to look back on this and say, okay, what all went on and um, what did I process through and what did she process through uh, with this trip? So maybe this is helpful for some of you, maybe not. Um, you can always make comments um, in, in the comment section below. Um, but this is certainly fun. By the way, this is, this is growing. So, so off topic, 
I decided to watch the very first episode, you'd notice I was clean shaven. Now, I'm not going to shave until the end of the trip. At least that's the plan. I don't know. This is really starting to bother my wife. Uh, but there's another thing. I'm a, for those of you who know me, I'm a huge Cincinnati Reds fan. They are currently on a 12th game winning streak. And that started like the day after I stopped shaving. So you know what that means. I'm seeing if they're ahead right now or not. Um, they're not. So maybe that's the reason why they're winning. Because I haven't shaved yet. I don't know. But even if they lose, I'm waiting until the end of the trip. We got, this is day 18. We've got 26 days. So wow, eight more days. And uh, then I can shave this off. I don't know. Tomorrow is going to be from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, down to, uh, it's right across the river from West Helena, Arkansas. I'm not going to be on the Arkansas side. I'm going to stay on the Tennessee-Mississippi side. I'll be crossing the Mississippi-Tennessee line pretty quickly tomorrow. Uh, it should be another pretty ride all the way down, 70 miles. Um, we'll try to get an early start. Problem is, there's supposed to be thunderstorms tomorrow. I don't know. I've been lucky so far. Uh, so we'll see how that works. I want to get it done early, though, because it's supposed to be hot again tomorrow afternoon. So I hope to get, hope to get started early um, and ha have a good ride and dodge those thunderstorms. I appreciate all you being with us and supporting us. It's been fun. Um, I know there's a lot of silliness that goes on all the other days, but I'd like to take some time and just talk about what's going on in the background of all the, all the days of uh, vlogging and writing. Take care, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.